यो हाय फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज सुदीप चंदन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल एनर्जी एनवायरमेंट एजुकेशन फ्रेंड्स दिस इज द सेकंड चैप्टर दैट आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट टुडे दैट इज इलेक्ट्रिकल मोटर्स एंड द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑलरेडी हैव अपलोडेड फ्यू वीडियोस इफ यू हैव मिस्ड द फर्स्ट चैप्टर प्लीज गो थ्रू देम आई शेयर द लिंक इन द कमेंट बॉक्स एंड द सेकंड चैप्टर इज इलेक्ट्रिकल मोटर्स सो आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट टुडे एंड होप दिस चैप्टर विल हेल्प यू टू अंडरस्टैंड Uh, and prepare the exam this is that is energy auditors exam or energy management exam that you are going to take this year or maybe coming years in a better way friends so let's start the video So let's see the content first, friends. So I'll be starting with the introduction part. That is what is motor all about a bit. And secondly, the type of motors, uh, different kind of motors. And third part will be the characteristics of motors and also the application of motors and the advantages of motors. So all these uh, points I'll be dealing with in this particular video, friends. And so to start with, friends, you should know some basic points. on electric motors so first point is the definition itself what is electric motor the electric motor is not is nothing but an electric machine that converts electric energy into a mechanical energy this is the first point the second point is the working principle of of the electric motor that you should know which works on the principle of electromagnetism uh, the third point is the different types of motors so basically there are two types of motors the ac motor and the dc motor the ac motor takes alternating current as an input whereas the dc motor takes as direct current as an input that also you should remember and the fourth point is uh, there are different sizes of motors uh, is available in different sizes in the market you can see uh, from ranging from 1 hp to 2 hp or 10 to 10 hp or up to 500 hp also you can get in the market uh, also if you know the uh, the motor applications so basically it is used in variety of applications uh, in a wide range of applications you can see such as fans power tools appliances vehicles etc so these are the different points that you should know this is for only for your basic understanding friends about the electric motors and as far as the motor efficiency is concerned friends so basically if you see any motor from 10 hp to 500 hp also so you see that the uh, initial efficiency of the motor is 85% to 95% at least and uh, even then also you can there is a scope of to improve the efficiency for by at least 1% to 4% by just improving improving the design of the motor so if you improve the design of the motor you will have a better efficiency friends and also one more thing is important here that the uh, loading condition if you see a motor at a uh, optimum load you see that the efficiency of motor is good that is uh, around 70 to 96% at least and but uh, as if you see the under loaded uh, motors you will have efficiency at a, a lower side i mean you will find the motor running inefficient So at a lower load so it's very much important to run the I mean, motor at optimum loading conditions and also proper sizing is important i mean there are a lot of facilities you see that the motors are either undersized or oversized this also impacts the efficiency of the motor so it's better to first of all run the motor at optimum load and second thing is to proper size the motors as per your requirement friends and now the types of motors friends uh, i mean there are different types of motors you see uh, like dc motors ac motors and other type of motors but the dc motor also see number of type of motors are there like dc shunt motor and then excited motors series motors pm dc motors when in the ac motor you see the induction motors synchronous motors and other motors uh, also you see like uh, stepper motor brushless motors hysteresis motor so there are different kinds of motors available in the market but uh, for the examination point of view friends uh, you do not uh, remember all these type of motors and neither they are going to ask you to uh, i mean just explain all these type of motors which i have shown in the um, this diagram you can see uh, on your screen so you need not uh, remember all these type of motors but still they you may expect some questions on this types of electric motors and for this you must remember the basic three types of electric motors friends and these are the uh, you see ac induction motors ac synchronous motors and dc motors so you may get number of different types of questions based on this three motors so you will you get some i mean uh, you can expect to have some briefly explain uh, uh, the ac induction motors type questions or maybe you may be asked to a uh, difference between the induction motor and the synchronous motors or maybe they ask you to difference between ac and dc motors or maybe they will give you some numerical based question also on this particular 
part of the chapter so these three important motors uh, are very much important for you to understand and you may expect to have different types of questions uh, on these type of motors basically friends so other uh, motors you need not remember only you remember that these three types of motors which is going to come into your exam basically friends uh, so now let's see friends what is induction motors all about and then later on we also see the different other different two types of motors that we are, have already mentioned in the uh, last slide friends so let's start with the induction motors first so what is an induction motor friends uh, the, here are the few points that you should remember on, on induction motor to start with uh, so first point is it is a three-phased AC motor the second point is uh, it is a most uh, modest electrical machine from construction point of view the third point is it works on the principle of induction and the fourth important point is it is the most common type of motors that we you see and which is used in industrial commercial or residential settings so these are the four points that you should, you should remember to start with friends and as far as the characteristic features is concerned friends you may expect a uh, short answer type questions where you may be asked to list out the basic characteristics of induction motor so these are the four points that you should remember and if you get uh, i mean if you are asked to answer this question so you can list out all these four points the first point is simple and rugged construction that's the first characteristic of, uh, of an induction motor second thing is low cost and minimum maintenance third thing is high depend Reliability and sufficient high proficiency, and the fourth point is needs no additional starting motor and necessarily not to be synchronized. So these are the four basic points uh, which uh, shows the characteristic features of an industrial motor. So you may expect to have a few questions based on this particular part of the chapter, friends. So basically the short answer type questions, or maybe also from arbitrary type questions, you may be asked from this part of the chapter, friends. So please remember all these four points as the characteristic feature of an industrial motor, friends. And the basic parts of an industrial motor, friends, uh, there are different parts in an industrial motor, but basically there are two important parts that you should remember: the starter and the rotor. And they, you may expect to have different type of questions from this part of the chapter. So basically, they may ask you to differentiate between the two parts, that is, starter and rotor, or they may ask you to define the two parts, or briefly explain the two parts. Uh, also, they may ask you in different way, like uh, what are the two different parts of industrial motors, uh, or the two important parts of industrial motor. And briefly explain the same so you can expect different type of questions from this part of the chapter friends so i have tried to explain you what is the same motor all about and also the different parts and how it works with a with the help of a simple short video friends so let's see the video first an induction motor is a type of ac motor where power is supplied to the rotor by means of electromagnetic induction these motors are widely used in house fans blowers and many domestic and industrial appliances they are robust cheap and have no brushes an ac induction motor has two basic electrical parts a rotor and a stator the stator is the stationary electrical component it is built by putting together iron layers forming a group of individual electromagnets arranged in such a way that they form a hollow cylinder with one pole of each magnet facing toward the center of the group Magnetic poles are built by winding clockwise and anti-clockwise insulated copper wire. The coils are wound in such a way that when current flows in them, one coil is a north pole and its pair is a south pole. When AC power is connected to the coils, a directional flux is created depending of current's direction and winding direction of each coil. See in this animation how the magnet's polarity changes every half cycle of the AC power supply creating an alternate magnetic field. The rotor is the rotating electrical component. It also consists of a group of electromagnets arranged around a cylinder with the poles facing toward the stator poles. The rotor, obviously, is located inside the stator. As the magnetic field of the stator alternates due to the effect of the AC power supply, the induced magnetic field of the rotor will be attracted and will follow the rotation. It is a natural phenomena which occurs when a conductor, aluminum bars in the case of a rotor, is moved through an existing magnetic field, or when a magnetic field is moved past the conductor. In either case, the relative motion of the two causes an electric current to flow in the conductor. This is referred to as induced current flow.
so i hope friends you must have enjoyed the video and you must have understood the working principle of the motor i mean how the water motor works and the different parts of the motors so those things you must have understood in the video that i have shared and showed you in the last slide so now the types of inductor motors so as far as the types of inductor motor is concerned there are two basic types on uh, which depends on the power supply the first part, first type is a single phase inductor motor the other one is a three phase inductor motor so one which gets the ac supply single phase ac supply uh, uh, are the single phase inductor motors and the other which is getting the three phase ac power supply are the three phase inductor motors so these are the two uh, different types of motors that you should remember uh, uh, and you may expect some questions on this part also for uh, friends so apart from this also is important to remember is the uh, application of, of single phase inductor motors like uh, and the, the application of three phase inductor motors so as far as the single phase inductor motor is concerned so basically the application is in the small pumps compressors small fans mixtures toys and the high speed spectrum cleaners that you use in your homes electric shavers savers and drilling machines all these are is a, a few appliances where the uh, single phase inductor motor is used and basically these are the appliances where which you use in your uh, households so there you see the application of single phase inductor motors and as far as the application of three phase inductor motors are concerned so friends unlike the single phase inductor motors uh, where, where it is used where they are used in uh, households or small appliances these these three phase inductor motors are basically used in commercial and industrial sectors friends so some of the applications you must remember they may ask you a short answer type questions where they may ask you to list out the uh, different applications of three phase or single phase inductor motors so as far as the three phase inductor motors are concerned it is used in lifts cranes hoists large capacity exhaust fans uh, oil extracting mills textiles etc so these are some of the applications that you should remember friends as far as the three phase inductor motors are concerned and also they may ask you a question like a uh, difference between the single phase and three phase inductor motor applications so uh, or the list out the different applications of single phase and three phase inductor motors so you must remember this part of the chapter friends is very important for your examination also you may expect to have some questions like the list out the different advantages of inductor motors so you may only uh, be asked to only list out the advantages or maybe in a short type questions you may be asked to list out the different advantages of inductor motor and also briefly explain them so this type of question also you may expect in the examination as a short type answer question or a part of long answer type questions or uh, from this part of sector friends so some of the advantages of inductor motors are like low cost uh, ease of operation low maintenance cost speed variation high starting torque and reliability so i'm not going to explain you each other these points these are very easy points which you may refer from the book and uh, you can understand in a simple way so uh, please friends uh, remember all these points it's very important points as far as the short answer type questions uh, you may expect from this part of the chapter friends and so let's see now the second type of motors from that is the synchronous motors so i have tried to explain you with a very short video so let's see the video first friends as the name suggests synchronous motors are capable of running at constant speed as the name suggests Synchronous motors are capable of running at constant speed irrespective of the load acting on them. They are machines with high efficiency and are mainly used in high precision applications. The constant speed characteristic is achieved by interaction between a constant and rotating magnetic field. Rotor of synchronous motor produces constant magnetic field and stator produces revolving magnetic field. The field coil of stator is excited by a three-phase AC supply. This will produce a revolving magnetic field, which rotates at synchronous speed. Rotor is excited by a DC power supply, so it acts like a permanent magnet. Alternatively, rotor can also be made of permanent magnet. Interaction of rotor and RMF is interesting. Assume you are giving an initial rotation to the rotor with same direction of RMF. You can see that opposite poles of RMF and rotor will attract each other and they will get locked magnetically. 
This means that rotor will rotate the same speed of RMF, or rotor will rotate at synchronous speed. Synchronous speed can easily be derived as follows. This means that if one has got control over frequency of the electricity, speed of synchronous motor can be very accurately controlled. But if the rotor has got no initial rotation, situation is quite different. North pole of the rotor will obviously get attracted by south pole of RMF and will start to move in the same direction. But since the rotor has got some inertia, this starting speed will be very low. By this time, south pole of RMF will be replaced by a north pole, so it will give repulsive force. As a net effect, rotor won't be able to start, or synchronous motors are not inherently self-starting. To make synchronous motors self-start, a squirrel cage arrangement is cleverly fitted through pole tips. At the starting, rotor field coils are not energized, so with revolving magnetic field, electricity is induced in squirrel cage bars and rotor starts rotating just like an induction motor. When the rotor has achieved its maximum speed, rotor field coils are energized. So as discussed earlier, poles of rotor gets locked with poles of RMF and will start rotating at synchronous speed. When rotor rotates at synchronous speed, relative motion between squirrel cage and RMF is zero. This means zero current and force on squirrel cage bars. Thus, it will not affect synchronized operation of motor. Synchronous motors will produce constant speed irrespective of motor load, only if the load is within the capability of motor. If external torque load is more than torque produced by the motor, it will slip out of synchronism and will come to rest. Low supply voltage and excitation voltage are other reasons of going out of synchronism. It is interesting to note that synchronous motor has got the same constructional features of an alternator. And so friends, I hope you must have enjoyed the video and you must have understood now you might have got a bit of fair idea of what is synchronous motor all about, the working principle of synchronous motor, different parts of synchronous motor. So apart from this, uh, also there is an important question which may be asked in the exam is the difference between the three phase induction motor and the synchronous motor. So you may expect to have short answer type questions based on this part of chapter friends. So basically a synchronous motor is double excited machine and the induction motor is a single excited machine. This is the first difference between the two different type, two types of motors. Now the second the, is the that the synchronous motor runs at a synchronous speed while the induction motor runs at a less than the synchronous speed. That is the second difference. The third difference is the induction motor has self-starting torque while the synchronous motor is not self-starting. The fourth difference is synchronous motor can be operated with lagging and leading power factor while the induction motor operates only at lagging power factor. And the fifth difference is the synchronous motor is more efficient while the induction motor is less efficient and the last uh, difference is synchronous motor is costlier uh, than the induction motor so these are the six differences between the two types of motors that is the induction motor and the synchronous motor that you must remember friends and you may expect to have uh, questions from this part of chapter also friends and this is an important formula friend that is ns equals 120 f by p that is you may be asked to calculate the synchronous speed uh, so this may be asked in the short answer type question also maybe a formula based question in an objective type question friends so you may remember this formula that is ns equals 120 f by p where ns is a synchronous speed that you may be asked to determine and uh, f is a, in a frequency in hertz and p is the number of pair of poles so they will provide you the uh, pair of poles and the frequency and then you may be asked to calculate the synchronous speed with this particular formula so you must remember the formula friends is very important as far as the objective questions is concerned in the examination friends so that's all for today friends uh, i hope you might have enjoyed the video and the content which i have given you in this particular video friends 
and hope this will help you to prepare uh, the, for the exam in a better way. Uh, so this is the end of the part A friend of the chapter number 2 with electric motors. Uh, stay connected for part B which I am going to upload in few days and also please uh, do connect with me and do let me know your thoughts, your inputs, your suggestions if you, any, if you have any. Uh, this is my email id that is chandansudeep07 at gmail.com also my mobile number is there 9354095167 you may contact me uh, in case of any support if you want from my side or if you want to have any suggestions or inputs from your side also please uh, go through my website where i have posted few blogs uh, that is takegreenstrips.com uh, also i'll be going to um, post few more blogs in coming days and last not the least friend and please subscribe my channel friends this will motivate me to prepare more such videos this is the only request from my side friends uh, that please do subscribe my channel uh, also please do press the bell icon so that you get the notification as soon as i post a new video in coming days apart from this also would like to request you to please like share and comment uh, uh, on this video and other videos that i'm going to post such that uh, it will make a bridge to more people and they may connect with me for any support they would like to have in preparation for the examinations so that's all for today friends for the time being please stay connected with me and please do let me know if any kind of support you want from my side or any suggestion if you want to give me or share with me from your side so stay connected friends uh, that's all for today thank you